Hey everyone, James Rees with TFB TV at the Sig Sauer Academy. I'm with my good friend Jason St. John, and we are talking about the MCX Spear today. Many of you have seen some of our coverage on the Firearm Blog, our parent publication on the MCX Spear. Can you tell everybody what your involvement was with the MCX Spear project? Yeah, you know, I come in a little bit later on the development of the gun itself. Um, that gun started out, and you'll see probably in the near future and our commercial line really where the foundation of that gun started. So that gun started out as a, you know, obviously a grown up MCX. So, you know, we expanded MCX to the a 7.62 uh, caliber platform that we had originally built for a different program for the U.S. Army as a, com as a competitor um, for that program. Um, it really kind of, that variation got put on the shelf. We sat with it, you know, for probably a good year, deciding what we wanted to do with it. And then when the next gen program came out, um, we thought, man, this would be a perfect candidate for the next gen rifle. Mm -hmm. um, our intention was to keep the gun as close to legacy systems as we possibly could. So we wanted to hand the soldier, we wanted to take his M4, mm -hmm. and we wanted to give him an M4, right? Mm -hmm. So that there was minimal training time, a lot of familiarity with weapon system. And they're really already emotionally connected. If you're an AR guy, you're emotionally connected to an AR. So sure. that's a good, good, good strategy right there. So we wanted to stay within the AR family. Hey, you're familiar with this weapon within 80 to 90 percent of its features and function, and it's just take it up and run with it, just a little bit of a little bit of a training bump. Um, so that was important to us. And then also, you know, the AR platform obviously is, is has got a history in the U.S. Army, and it's a significant and wonderful design. So this is the MCX Spear. It's built and based off of our MCX line. Really, we kind of call it behind the scenes the big brother to our MCX Virtus. But it's a lot of you know, similar design features just expanded into an AR-10-ish platform size. We'll kind of go from back to front to kind of take a look at the features of the weapon system. Um, because of the MCX and its operating system, it allowed us to have, you know, like our MCX, we have a, we have a foldable and then we have a collapsible buttstock, right? Um, we improved the latch design. Um, so now it's, you know, not that it really needed to be improved, but we just wanted to make the ease and the ability for the average user just to not have to look at it and kind of bind it a little bit. It's intuitive now where it automatically pulls through. So detent, defeat the, defeat the uh, hinge, but when you, when, you, when you collapse it, it's captured. All right, so you don't have to worry about it flopping around. There's no button to put it back into action. You simply pull through and it's in action. Um, the gun's completely 100% functional with, with the gun folded, and we've designed it as such that you have access to the controls. Uh, very important to shorten the weapon system up for climbing, confined spaces, vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. So we're pretty happy with that feature. It's got a traditional and standard charging hanger like you used to see on any on AR. And then we've added a side charging handle. Now it's a non-reciprocating captured charging handle. One of the really neat things that we really pride ourselves in at SIG is our relationship with current and past end users. So we get a lot of end user and operator level feedback and we translate that especially to our engineers and we're very fluid within those design elements. So we have a non-reciprocating side charging handle so it doesn't move back and forth while firing. There's no snag points. It actually has a detent and a nipple that keeps it from being able to be knocked out of battery. So in normal operation, you don't have to worry about it snagging on your equipment and being pulled out of battery and the weapon not being able to fire. Um, you lift it up, pull it back. A pretty strong feature. We really, we really like it. Allows a right-handed shooter to keep his hand on the gun and be able to operate the weapon system compared to having to fumble around a few ways that you have to with the AR. Notice that there's QD mounts forward and aft in multiple positions for left and right-handed shooters. You get into our controls. All our controls are ambidextrous, so three-position safety. Got the same features on the on ambidextrous safety. Our bolt catch, bolt release is ambidextrous. Our magazine release is ambidextrous as well. So all of our controls support left and right hand firing. Look at some of the design features. You'll see that we have steel inserts here where the cam path would normally wear on an aluminum receiver. That never needs to be replaced, um, but it you know, extends the life cycle of the weapon system. As we get in internal aspects, there's some other parts in there that are also heavy steel. So when we looked at some of the newer ammunitions that have steel tip or something like that, it prevents that from wear and tear on the weapon system itself. Um, so we have a full length power rail for data and power transfer to our enablers, just like in our, uh, light M our LMG NGSWAR submission. Um, M-Lock forearm, uh, move forward, we got a two position gas setting, normal and adverse, suppressed or unsuppressed, it'll run in the normal setting, adverse is for when the weapon, for maintenance reasons, environmental reasons, becomes sluggish or slow, switch it over to adverse, increases the gas of the system, and the system runs a little bit faster, um, but really that's the, the uh, MCX Spear in a nutshell. I'd say one of the best things that we do at SIG Sauer in reference to weapons development is that we have you know, synergy is the big word, right? But we have this, we have a very good relationship between, you know, specifically our, you know, experienced end users that work in the company, 
our outreach to current end users and operators to get their feedback, our R&D engineering team, and then our manufacturing engineering team. Those are all, you know, they're all interlaced through the process so that we can, you know, go from development to manufacturing in a, in a really big hurry. But we want to make sure that we provide the best weapon systems to the end user and give them the features that they want. You know, so, um, you know, I've got 22 years in the, in the U.S. Army. Other guys on the team have 15, 25, 25 in this organization. we got LE, uh, you know, experience throughout the organization. And so, you know, with all of that end user experience, we see what we thought were pitfalls and downfalls and improvements that would have been nice to have in the weapon system. But we also go back out to the military and law enforcement community. We put the gun out to them, and then we're very fluid and dynamic within the development of that. Um, you know, that gun has probably gained you know, 10% in feature set over the last eight to 10 months, just from uh, events that we've done with the Army, events that we've done with other military branches, putting in their hands and having those guys say, hey, this would be great, this isn't right, this needs to be looked at, this needs to be improved. Um, so, you know, when the end result's where it is, we think that we are probably real close to a, a, a supremely refined, you know, next-gen weapon system. But I can tell you with what you're holding, in four months, there'll, there'll, there'll be five to eight percent, and, and, and change is already done to it as we evolve and move into the next phases um, for those for those programs. And then the benefit of that is, is you know, our, our mindset is is the professional user, and then really bringing that to the commercial environment. You know, that that's our business models. We want it. We want to provide the best um, defense and LE oriented weapon systems for the professional user whose life depends on it on a daily basis. But we want to bring all of that feature and all of that development. We want to bring it to the commercial market, and hopefully, you know, your users and your hopefully your viewers can see that within the products that they see on the shelves today. They're, they're pro professionally derived. Two questions then, specifically related to what you just said. One's a short answer and one, you can explore the space. Short answer, is this going to be available to the commercial market at, at some point? In the, I would say in the near future. In the firearms world, that's you know 12 to 18 months. Sure, so are we saying this is 100% go? Yes. Okay, long answer, Yep. explore the space. Um, we have a lot of international viewers. We have a lot of new shooters that are viewers on, on this program. You took us to 201 with your last answer. Let's step it back to 101. I'm going to call this a SIG MCX in 308, but with a barrel that is 6.8 by 51. So it's got the, it shoots 6.8 as the caliber. Uh, it's a 6.8 by 51 gun, and it's an MCX in 308. How far off base am I with that? No, that's a very, very accurate description. I mean, it's just the 6A by 51 is derived from 7.62 by 51. Right. So, I mean, realistically, if you look at it, and that gun is available or will be available and is convertible to 7.62. And so right. just think of it as a 7.62 gun, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just like 300 Blackout and 5.56 where all you have to do, you all the operating components are interchangeable between those two calibers. All you do is swap the barrel and boom, you're in business. 100%. Okay, same magazines too and everything. Yep, yep, so we're running, yep, we run 20 and 25 round Lancers in that currently, but you know, Magpul magazines, any 7.62 magazine, you know, interfaces with it. Why 6.8 by 51, why? That's, that's, well, you know, the thing is that was driven, the caliber specific projectile 6.8 was driven by the military requirements. Mm -hmm. What you did behind it is a completely different story. So if you look at the other competitors and where we're at, you'll see a lot of variations in how they brought that 6.8 caliber projectile to market, case telescoping, polymer, and then we utilized our hybrid design. We're able to increase performance, we're able to decrease weight, um, we're able to keep uh, legacy manufacturing so it gets manufactured just as it was always on, same presses, same, same machinery. Um, and like I said, we've able, been able to increase performance. I'd say the one, other than those, one of the biggest benefits about our cartridge design, our hybrid design, which you'll see in the 6.8 SIG Fury, uh, you see the 6.8 SIG that's available to the commercial market is in that hybrid design, is, I don't want to call it exponential or limitless, mm -hmm. but it's almost limitless in growth to where we could probably foresee materials and weapons capabilities in the in the in the very, you know, we're talking a couple of decades before we'll totally outrun what its capabilities are. What um, I think SIG did intelligently with this is you've got a, a common caliber, like a 308 chassis, 308 guts, and you're just working with a different barrel. Of course, everybody knows with the SIG MCX, very easy, very quick to change the barrels. That's all you have to do to swap the caliber. But let's say somebody wants to know, if, if I want a 308 MCX, why do I want to spend the money on a 6.8 by 51 barrel? You know, cartridges and decisions to make on which cartridge to go, whether it's 6 Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor, 243, 
260, you know, a lot of those things are just really kind of an intimate decision. We're always chasing an extra 25, 50, 75 feet per second. And we've always been kind of held within the standard structure of a brass cartridge and its, and its pitfalls. You know, and then whip, weapons are really built to those pressures because there's mm -hmm. no reason to exceed them because the, the brass cartridge itself fails. You know, this gun is built to and test and, uh, and improved to extreme pressures mm -hmm. and our ammunition is test and proof to extreme pressures. When I say extreme pressures, you know, significantly higher than SAMI specs slash limitations that you run into with traditional brass. And so that's the growth potential. So, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you move into the hybrid design with a 6.8, you know, that versus say a standard brass cartridge, you're probably 100, on, on a very small level, you're 100 feet per second faster in a very safe zone for pressures. If you wanted to go into and work on some other things, the weapon system can handle it, the cartridge can handle it, and I mean you can you can really step up the pressures and get you know a, a much higher level of performance. What is the hybrid system? You use that term. I understand you and yeah. I have talked about it all day today, but for the viewers out there who have no clue what you're talking about, what do you yeah. mean by hybrid? System? Yeah, so I'll hit the wave tops of it because you know Please. we could geek out. Yeah, yeah, right? sure. Yeah, so, yeah, but, yeah. so basically, if you look at a standard brass cartridge, um, a lot of benefits to brass. Like we were talking about with pressure, there's a the, the pitfall of it is it is it it's you know has a pressure limitation. So if you you know if you've shot a lot of borderline pressure loads, the primer pocket generally deforms. There's some gas leakage. Sometimes it'll actually eject the entire primer out of there. So that's the weak point of it. Um, the benefits of brass is it's softer, it's malleable, so you get neck tension that's easy to load, reload, resize, etc. As you look at our hybrid cartridge, our hybrid cartridge has taken let's call it the, you know, the bottom 10 to 15%. We've replaced that with stainless steel, which is lighter, but also stronger. And so we can use less material, but less material also gives you increased case volume. So instead of having a thicker wall at the base mm -hmm. as brass is drawn, now I got a standard consistent um, wall thickness. I've increased probably case volume grain, grain and a half. Mm -hmm. But I've also, with the strength of the steel, completely eliminated the primer pocket issues. So right. I can take extreme pressures and, and handle it without any, without any risk of, of, the, of the cartridge failing. You know, a lot of people talk with those types of ammos like polymers and things about adhesives. Ours are pressed together. They, 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 I won't say they can't be pulled apart. They'll never be pulled apart in normal usage. I mean, you can put anything on a very big pole press and pull them apart eventually, but the fail, the fail weight on them is 1,500, 2,000 plus pounds. Do you see this in the hands of any government purchasers? Well, <laughs> if everything goes the way we want, that whole gun right there ends up in the hands of government purchasers, right? We, we would be honored and our obvious goal is to, to win the next gen weapons program and to replace the M4s for the warfighter with our MCX Spear. I think that's one thing that's really unique about our MCX Spear and then our light machine gun that I know that you will probably talk about or have talked about um, is they're already, we're already receiving orders. We're already fulfilling, mm -hmm. we're already fulfilling orders. So even though we're in a continuous evolvement, let's call it working prototype venture for the next gen program, you know, designs are finalized and, and you know, and, and are going out to market. You know, sure. so and you know, and the you know seven six two machine gun. I know that I know that the the, the uh, light machine gun six eight for the next gen is six eight, obviously mm -hmm. from being derived and directed by the military. You know, we make that machine gun in six five Creedmoor. We make it in uh, seven six two, and we're delivering those and mm -hmm. we're manufacturing them. So even though we're in the prototype phase, we're on we're on full rate production and delivering orders as we speak throughout the world. I'm a viewer who does not know what the NGSW program is. What does it stand for? What is it? Yeah, so it's the it's the U.S. Army, which evolved into the U.S. Military Next Gen Squad Weapons Program. So you have a rifle replacement, and you have an automatic rifle replacement. Rifle replacement for the M4, automatic rifle replacement for the squad automatic rifle. At this point, would be an M249. I think one of the things that we think is really amazing about the 6.8 and the way that we've configured it is we 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 exceed 7.62 performance. So now is it not just a replacement or working alongside a 240 with the M249? Now that machine gun can replace real, real, realistically both systems. We feel that we can take, if we would take, as you looked at the 338 machine gun, was, well, the, the medium machine gun 338, mm -hmm. the light machine gun 68, those two machine guns replace the M249 saw, the M240, and the M2. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're 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 replacing everything from a squad to a heavy weapon heavy weapons machine gun through the U.S. Army, and then and obviously getting it all from the same place. And all well, not even not even from Sig. Of course, we want to give it all from right, the same sure. place. But more importantly, is is I've got one weapon that replaced two, mm -hmm. and my 338 replaces one that weighs 60 pounds more. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I significantly lighten the load for both platforms, but I streamline the weapons, you know, the, the weapons fielding, you know, uh, you know, table of organizational um, inventory for the Army. Jason, I got to say, this is exciting stuff. I really appreciate you guys letting me peek behind the curtain here. Oh, and, pleasure to have you. And it's, it's great having you. It's always great having you on the program. Thanks a ton for speaking oh, appreciate to us you. about Thank the you. MCX Spear. Guys, stay tuned. We're bringing you more from the Six Hour Academy.